I have uh, three things to, tell, uh, to talk about. Number one will be uh, why is uh, grid parity now really real? And I mean grid parity, grid parity and unsubsidized. I'm not talking about merchant. There's a difference between a merchant project and an unsubsidized solar. There was a kind of a confusion in the last session about that probably. Um, unsubsidized means no subsidy, no feed-in tariff, not even a tax incentive scheme or whatever. It's just plain building a plant and selling the electricity as everybody else would build a coal-fired or a nuclear power plant or whatever. This is unsubsidized. Merchant would be that you don't have a long-term PPA so that you are exposed to um, the spot price market in terms of when you sell the electricity. So that's a big difference. Secondly, I would like to touch on the points which were important for us to get the PPA done uh, with uh, Stadtkraft for this, um, for this uh, plant. And number three would be a kind of an outlook um, from our perspective where it's going to be in Europe in the next couple of years. Okay, the Don Rodrigo project, we started this actually back in 2013 when we said, okay, maybe at one point in time in the far future there will be grid parity. If there will be grid parity for solar, where, where will it be in Europe? Of course, it should be in southern Europe because we have higher radiation rates here. So we were kind of um, searching for, for, for a good sites um, in various countries, in Greece, in Turkey, in Italy, and in Spain. And uh, ultimately, Spain came out um, as the best spot for that, for some reasons. Last not least, political um, and uh, economically, etc., etc. But also land costs, grid availability, and all these kinds of reasons. So, and there it is. Uh, it looks a bit chaotic, but it's uh, uh, because we have several streets in between there and it's a bit sp uh, split it. You have over there, this is a substation into 400 kV and then going into the substation of uh, Red Electrica directly in a uh, transmission line. Um, and this is a fixed tilted uh, panel array um, which is running on 1,500 volt DC and yeah, uh, as far as we know, it's the first project with such a long-term uh, PPA. Um, um, I will come to this later. And I promise it's completely without subsidy. So no money from nobody, from no government in this world. Uh, which was important because at the time when we were discussing this um, internally, all our investors said, are you guys crazy to go into Spain? We just suffered from the uh, uh, retroactive tariff cuts, and now you are telling me you want to go back to Spain. And we said, okay, yes, it is Spain, but we won't interfere with any governmental thing, uh, so we should be okay. So that was the main point uh, for us uh, to go there. So, and I'm happy to announce that this project here now uh, provides an IRR, unlevered of 6.5, which is calculated on a 25-year base, and um, having a leverage in place, this would lift up the equity IRR up to 8.5. So how is this possible? Well, the main reason is this one. This is the development of the panel prices uh, coming from 2012 until late 2017. I should update the, the, the file, but we are now right at this tipping point of 30 euro cents, euro cents per, uh, per watt peak. Um, and uh, I took the freedom to, 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 to kind of an analysis of what would be the perspective of panel prices in the next coming years. And you might believe it or not, but I think there's a quite high probability that um, the panel price development in the future will quite nicely follow that trend uh, in the future as well. And if you talk to uh, uh, suppliers of panel manufacturers, 
like Hario's uh, glass manufacturers and whatever, they can confirm that there is still quite some potential for panels and for production of panels to get even uh, below that numbers. So that was one assumption. Um, secondly, funnily enough, when we look into the structure of the costs of a PV system in the past and nowadays, it strikes that the panel is always like 50% of the total cost, regardless in which year I looked. It's always like the panel is 50%. So if, if the panel price is 30, the generator will be built at 60. If the panel price is like three euros, which we had in the golden times, like in 2008, we were selling solar farms for six. So that was, that was the mechanics, and it didn't change over the years. Don't get uh, irritated by this number, this is totally wrong, right? We are right now already at uh, 60 euro cents. I mean, this is US dollar, but anyway, uh, this is, I don't know where the, these guys have their numbers from, but uh, it's, that's, that's not the truth anymore. So, having said that, you have capex of like 60, you will have additional cost for uh, grid connection, you will have additional cost for land lease, you will have additional cost for um, uh, 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 transmission line, etc., etc. But this is, uh, um, uh, as a bulk number, you can uh, take that. And it also reflects in all the um, uh, results we had from the last tenders. So this is a, um, uh, this cloud here is all the tenders we had uh, in the, um, in, internationally actually, uh, in the last years. And there you can see some uh, famous uh, re uh, tender results, which was in 2016, Abu Dhabi, $24 uh, per megawatt hour, which was Mexico, the last tender, which was $19 per megawatt hour. And, uh, and this is, by the way, the curve I was copying from the panel chart you saw before. So there is a high correlance of panel price, system price, and tender results. You have to take into account that these projects are not built in 2016, but they are built like two years later. So what are these guys doing? They are, of course, anticipating. Um, I am offering a tender price here and expect to build it in two years from then, and my BOS cost will be then right on that line. So that's how, they, how, how many people uh, calculate and speculate on these tenders. This is, by the way, also the, uh, the, uh, the reason why we now are in Germany, like at 50, nobody can build at 50 euros, at, yeah, five euro cents per kilowatt hour. Right now in Germany, a plant which gives a, which gives a healthy uh, IRR. But if you postpone it like two years, or in Germany it's one and a half year, then it's possible again. So this is how these uh, tender prices uh, come into place. Well, we, we were not exposed to any kind of tender, thank God. Um, so we just uh, took this curve and said, okay, probably we will be there, hopefully we will be there in some years from now. And uh, yeah, gladly we matched that number, uh, more or less. Um, just, for you, uh, just for your information, the uh, PPA, the latest or the youngest nuclear power plant in UK, Hinkley Point, was achieving is 140 euro per megawatt hour. And this is a PPA for 35 years plus inflation. Thank you very much. This is old world and this is new world. Now, how, how do we come to this LCOE cap, uh, calculation? Um, for that, you have to, to, of course, to look at the entire lifetime of a solar plant. And when you, you have, of course, quite some large OPEX, you have some little, uh, 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 sorry, quite some large CAPEX, quite some little OPEX, and uh, some, of course, interest costs when you go for a leverage. So these are the three main cost drivers for the LCOEs. And that, there you are. We have here like 20 years depreciation. This is by far the biggest block, which is literally the 
uh, upfront investment we, ha we have to take when we build the plant. Then we have a loan, which is here running for 18 years. So we have interest costs for 18 years. But after we paid back our loan, this cost block, of course, disappears. And then we have uh, the base number OPEX, which are, uh, which are uh, kind of a constant number. Why is it constant? Because we took inflation out. So this is uh, real money, no inflation. If you inflate this, all the curves go up by inflation, right? But it's also the case with these power curves we have here. These are the trend forecasts from uh, Perry in this case, high, central, and low. These are the forecasts for the Spanish market. Um, PV generated uh, uh, power curves. Um, what was the expression to this morning? How could they, how, how did they call it? I don't remember. Um, anyway, so this is the solar specific um, uh, forecast and you can see, of course, interestingly enough, there is, there is quite some margin left over. So that means when I now take the average of this curve, then uh, starting with four euro cents and coming down to as a number as, as low as 0 0.79 euros per megawatt hour cost. So that means in 20 years from now, this park produces a kilowatt hour less than one euro cent per kilowatt hour. And no technology, no technology in this world can beat this price. And this is, I think, a very important uh, uh, learning for all of us now that this is the beauty of photovoltaic. Long term, nobody can beat this technology in terms of pricing for LCOEs. And this um, is completely independent of what will happen with the oil price in the next 20 years. It's completely independent of what will happen with interest rates in the next 20 years. It's completely independent from all those factors. And this is why all those power curve experts and crystal ball guys will have also to change their model quite significantly because um, as uh, someone in the uh, other panel said, those, those curves are just not interlinked anymore. This cost curve is completely independent. It's just made out of the investment and of the consequences of the operation. Well, okay, now, so what we have to do now is to find a PPA, which is above this 26.9, right? And giving us a, a good, let's say, security to uh, make it bankable and to have um, a, a, an, an interesting yield expectation for the investor afterwards. So we tried to go for a as long as possible PPA, as we said, uh, for two reasons. One reason is the cash flows are, the longer we go, the better it is for the cash flow when we uh, have to repay the loan. And secondly, it is a kind of a scheme which is known by the investors. Because what we are doing right now is also, of course, we have to educate investors that the world is changing, but not so much. It's changing in steps. And what are the main structural components we took care of? Uh, because we were, at the very beginning, already talking not only with the off-taker, but we were also talking to the bank in parallel and uh, with the investor to, let's say, to merge the interest of all those three parties. These are only a few points. I mean, in the, in the uh, panel here we had this afternoon with all the lawyers, there were many more points uh, which are absolutely correct, but uh, these are, to me, the most important ones. First of all, um, electricity has to be taken entirely no limit on, on, uh, on uh, the production. Of course, what we could do is also like having several PPAs stacking up the whole production of a plant, but it should be, should be good to make sure that everything what the park produces is being sold. Secondly, maximize the term of the, op, uh, of the off term. The longer we can go with the PPA term, the longer the bank finance can be, and the less stiff will be the uh, the, 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 the payback and interest curve. So that's also um, um, very important 
But what we did, we agreed on a floor price with uh, Statkraft uh, so that the bank could be fine in uh, making their banking case based on the floor price because this will be the revenue they will have for sure. And third is um, uh, to help the investor, it's very good to have a kind of a fixed price phase in the beginning because then the investors can see ah, this is a fixed income stream coming, so the concept is working, I'm fine. Yeah? So that was uh, then the outcome to say, okay, let's go for a 15-year PPA. The duration is 15 years, and we have five years fixed, and then we have a floor price scheme uh, for uh, the remaining 10 years. This is what's meant here. Um, it has several advantages. Advantage uh, number one is, of course, that the off-taker is secured against falling prices over time and uh, can therefore offer a longer term. Um, because when we're now talking about long-term PPAs, it doesn't mean that the price is fixed for this long term, but only the duration of the contract as such. Um, and um, the producer, of course, would be uh, secured against, let's say, um, a worst case scenario breaking through the floor and having a stranded asset as, uh, uh, in the worst case. And if prices rise, then he has, of course, the benefit of getting the higher um, energy prices. So, and for that, this requires, of course, to have, and we, we heard this in the other panel, if you have a long term PPA, of course, it comes down to the risk, the insolvency risk. Of, of the parties of the, of the PPA. So is the off-taker really good for 15 years taking the electricity and paying its bill every month? Is the IPP really good for operating that plant in a good manner for 15 years, et cetera, et cetera? So for that, uh, it's, it's, uh, I have to say that it's, it's, it's getting more and more crucial that the counterparties of these uh, agreements are kind of uh, uh, reliable and, uh, and big enough, which is actually bad news for small investors because that's, that's definitely a kind of a threat when, when you're going to, towards uh, long-term PPAs. Okay, um, having said that, what's now the outlook uh, for utility scale in Europe? Well, first of all, one of my most favorite charts it's not from BIVA, but it's from EU reference scenario 2020. New hydro cost 13, new nuclear 11, new gas 8.5, new coal 6.3, new wind 5 cents, new PV 4 cents per kilowatt peak, or per kilowatt hour, sorry, per kilowatt. This means nobody can beat the costs of solar, the LCOEs of solar. And this is something we should really a hammer into our minds because I was learning now 15 years photovoltaics is too expensive, uh, it's not reliable. People from RWE, big German utility, said, Oh, building solar in Germany is like growing ananas in, on the North Pole. Yeah, that was the comment of uh, German utilities at that time. So always think about that. I could do this the whole afternoon. <laughs> so, and if you have one takeaway from this conference, then it is that photovoltaic is not the most expensive. It's the cheapest energy source of human mankind. And this is, of course, the chance for this market, in particular in Italy, uh, to take off now. And when we look then to, let's say, the development over Europe, then of course you have to take uh, the irradiation into account. So you, you saw the four euros. At Don Rodrigo, we are already down to 2.7, yeah, or 2.9, at 2.7 was it. So that means, uh, but if we go up into Germany, it will be not like 2.7, that's the radiation of Spain, it will be more like four point something, right? And if you go up to, I don't know, Aberdeen, or Helsinki, yeah? of course, taking the prices of today, 
it will be more expensive. So we were doing a study, or Becquerel was doing a study, the Becquerel Institute in Brussels was doing a study comparing the expected power, uh, power price curves of each country and comparing this with the cost of solar in the future according to what, what, uh, what we told them as kind of price indications for the next year. And it turns out that the, that the boundary of, of grid parity, which is right now actually already existing in southern Spain and in Sicily, will move upwards year by year as costs of PV will go down, this boundary will go up. And this means, yes, I believe that by 2030, we can also build solar in dark countries like Finland. Um, thank you very much for that. Uh, I hope you enjoy the afternoon. Uh, thanks a lot for, for a great presentation. Uh, there's a couple of questions from the audience, and I'll, I'll, uh, we just have time for one, but I'll combine them in two. Um, why did Baiwa not decide to did it decide not to participate in the in the tenders and go subsidy free? Mm -hmm. And is there any advantage for being the first mover? Yeah, in, in uh, to go completely subsidy free. Yeah, um, the tender in Spain is just useless <laughs> because um, it's again depending on the government, they can change the rules of this tender and of the fit and, and, and of the conditions of the tender every three years, and they can cancel this tender scheme entirely all, every six years. And this also affects installations which have been taken part at the tender already. So I ask you, what is this kind of tender worth? It's worth nothing. And you better go without any involvement of any government uh, you will be better off for the bankability and for the security of your investment rather than to, uh, to, to, uh, to go with the tenders. So that's point number one. Uh, point number two, um, it's, I wouldn't say it's a chance, uh, it's, 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 it's an advantage to be first mover. I, um, as a matter of fact, it's always a kind of a huge risk you take when you are first mover. I heard the colleagues from For Foresight saying, yeah, we like to be first mover. Baiwa normally doesn't like to be first mover because the first mover normally is the one with the bloody nose. Uh, in this case, we have been kind of a bit lucky because back in 2013, we could not know that we would have a spot in 2018 where we could really do it. Uh, so that was a, a bit of a luck, I have to say. Um, so for that, uh, I think, yes, it's good now that we can show the path to everybody that it's working. And I would hope and engage all of you uh, that, that we will do lots of uh, unsubsidized solar in this country and in Spain, so in all Europe for the next coming years. Thank you. Thanks Thank a you. lot. Pleasure. Thank this you. is Monge from our side. Thanks a lot.